Number 9. Ancient Aliens The Greek historian Plutarch gave a written account of an alien surveillance on the battlefield during the Third Mithridic War, sometime during 75 and 63 BC. He wrote that the air opened up and an object quickly descended and resembled a flame in the shape of a vase that was looking like a bright annealed metal in color. Both armies, frightened by the sight, withdrew. The alien ship was described as a Greek urn. The Roman historian Livio recorded in the History of Rome, written in about 27 BC, that some kind of ghost ships were observed to shine in the sky. Although these ships may have been alien spacecrafts, they appeared to be completely conventional ships. It is possible that this observation is an example of an optical illusion called Fata Morgana, in which light reflects through the air in a varying density and bends upwards. As our eyes see things in a straight line, it may seem that objects such as a ship sitting on the sea may look like it's floating above it. Who knows what it was? Do you have any other ideas? Let me hear about it in the comments. Number 8. Extraterrestrial Signs In April 1561, the sky above Nuremberg was filled with alien objects. Smoke could be seen coming out of the Earth, as if some of the objects had crashed. The scene was captured by Hans Glaser, who was a woodcutter who was a medieval equivalent of a photojournalist. The material that he created shows a variety of shapes, including red crosses, black lead orbs, along with spear-like objects. It is said that the scene was witnessed by several Nuremberg residents who naturally saw it as a sign of existence of God. Glaser wrote that in the beginning, two semicircular red-colored arcs appeared in the middle of the sun, like the moon in its last quarter. And in the sun, up and down on either side, the color was red and there was a circular ball of iron in color, partly opaque and partly black. Likewise, on both sides of the sun, there were a large number of glowing orbs of some kind. Among these spheres, there were visible red crosses, among which were red stripes. That certainly sounds alarming. He claimed that these objects began to fight with the sun for more than an hour, with each one eventually falling and burned to the ground. Glaser saw the phenomenon as a sign that the people of Nuremberg must make a step towards repairing their lives and pray to God faithfully so they can escape his anger. Germany has been in the midst of the Protestant Reformation since Martin Luther placed his 95 on the door of the church in 1517. God and the possibility of eternal damnation were never far from anyone's mind. I don't know what Glaser witnessed, but it sounds scary and unnatural. And now for number seven. But first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number 7. Zeppelin Spaceship The first airship was built in France in 1852, and the first Zeppelin was built in Germany in 1893. It changed the future of aviation from a one-person type to a passenger-type aircraft. Zeppelin's distinctive cigar-shaped body was immediately recognizable, and public interest in this revolutionary mode of travel spread across the globe. Since November 1876, mysterious sightings of a cigar-shaped vessel have been reported in California, Texas, and the Great Lakes for 20 years. In 1897, one of these machines was witnessed by the occupants of a Nebraska court, including jurors, attorneys, and even a judge. It was recorded as a bright white light with colored lights around it. It was oval with a structure hanging from it with a box and a propeller in the stern, which sounds more like a cross between a Zeppelin and a hot air balloon. The judiciary of Harrison, Nebraska were not the only witnesses, though. Dozens of other observations have been reported, but not all of them credible. In 1897, Alexander Hamilton recounted seeing a Zeppelin-like ship with six of the strangest creatures he had ever seen that were standing in a basket, dragging one of its cows to the ship. After that, the flying machine disappeared from view. Hamilton went so far as to receive sworn confessions of honesty from his neighbors, and the story spread as fast as the common cult. In the end, however, it was revealed that Hamilton belonged to a liar's club, where he was known to be a keen storyteller, and his story was quickly dismissed as a lie. Due to his bad reputation, whatever he saw was quickly debunked and people quickly forgot about it. But what if he was telling the truth? Number 6. Fireball Ship Aliens during World War II, there were rumors that Germany had developed an unusual aircraft prototype and was known to be experimenting with rocket and propulsion technology. There were several observations of these fighters called Foo Fighters because Foo meant something ridiculous or strange. It is true that the Germans built some strange machines, but these new machines were different from any other aircrafts at the time. They were also made of fire. Witnesses claimed that the machines could lift off and float like a helicopter with an amazing amount of force used to launch them and they were moving at a rate nearly as surprising as their engulfment in flames. No other terrestrial machine could ever come close to the characteristics and appearance like these. 
Despite the obvious advantages of these crafts, the Germans did not seem to utilize their inventions enough, and after the war was over, the machines disappeared from view. They were rumored to have been smuggled to a secret underground location in Antarctica, where they were allegedly built in the first place. This prompted sightings throughout the United States. Were the Germans able to create such technology? Or did they somehow acquire alien technology? It still remains a mystery to this day. Number 5. OEM Flying Saucer In 1947, flying saucers and crescent-shaped vessels were spotted over Mount Rainier in Washington. The report was judged credible as it was witnessed by two airplane pilots with experience in aircraft recognition. One of the pilots claimed that although he has never seen anything like it, he was sure that it must have been an experimental aircraft built by the government in some top-secret facility. The other pilot was not that certain. The two pilots of the commercial flight maintained that the disc-shaped ship was moving at high speed. They saw a very large saucer leading four others. As the first group disappeared above the horizon, another group appeared. They were able to track the strange ships for about 15 minutes and noticed that they left no trace in the air at all. Fortunately, aliens seemed to have come to peace. One of the pilots said that whoever controlled the strange machines didn't try to hurt anyone. That makes sense, because advanced civilizations are rarely barbaric, right? The description they gave of the flying saucers were so detailed that they have remained in the public vision. Number 4. The Salem Visitors In 1952, the U.S. underwent its own alien invasion. There was a wave of observations even over the White House itself, and many Americans began to wonder if Judgment Day had come. For two weeks in July 1952, Pilots and radar operators noticed objects in the sky. Fighters were even sent to intercept a ship that disappeared as soon as they approached it. The objects were described as orange balls. It was even said that President Truman had asked for an explanation from the Air Force. They claimed that the phenomena was caused by mirages due to the temperature fluctuations, creating the same illusions of Fata Morgana that were observed in ancient Rome, mixed with a great deal of collective hysteria. A photo of the mysterious objects were taken in Salem, Massachusetts by the Coast Guard, who took the picture through a window. The four ships were also seen by another Coast Guard. It is claimed that the bright elliptical images seen on the image can be a result of deliberate fraud by double exposure of the negative. Some also said that they may simply be a reflection of some streetlight in the glass windows. Sure. Number 3. Vigilante Aliens By 1953, the alien invaders seemed to be completely calm tourists. However, when they allegedly hijacked an American plane, the perception of them changed from hijackers to predators really fast. In November 1953, Michigan radio operators reported an unidentified target in the Great Lakes restricted airspace. It marked the border between the United States and Canada, and a fighter jet was sent from the Kinross Aerial Base for investigation. The pilot and his radar operator reported that they were having trouble tracking the ghost, and ground-based air traffic controllers were watching the two dots on the screen as the fighter plane approached its target. The dots came closer and then seemed to have merged. It was feared that both ships had crashed, but that was not the case. The unidentified ship continued its course into Canada's airspace, and the fighter jet simply disappeared. No further response was received from the fighter jet, and a search and rescue operation was launched in the Canadian assistance. No trace of the aircraft or its crew was ever found, and many theories were presented about the incident including the suggestion that the Kinross aircraft was swallowed by an alien ship which then simply blew off. What really happened that day may never be uncovered. Do you have an explanation of what happened to the plane? If so, let me know in the comments below. Number 2. Aliens Needing a Hand When looking at surveillance reports, one of the most important factors that researchers believe is eyewitness credibility. So when a missionary priest announces that he saw a UFO, it was something worth considering. In 1959, Reverend William Booth Gill worked as a missionary in Papua New Guinea when he noticed a bright object in the sky. For the next four hours, the monk made notes and observed the light along with 30 other witnesses. After about 45 minutes, the lights disappeared briefly, then returned, carrying with it three smaller objects. The mothership began to emit blue light and came so close to the missionary that he could see four alien figures on top of the ship. They only left when it started to rain. The next evening, the ships returned and the four figures returned to stand on top of the ship. This time, they waved. Reverend Gill greeted them. Then everyone went out to dinner. After all, the aliens are aliens, but apparently hunger is more important than visitors from other planets. The Australian government was so convinced by the missionary's report and his credibility as an eyewitness that they ordered an investigation. They concluded that the phenomenon is likely to have a natural cause and that human form formations may be due to variations in cloud density which is a polite way of saying that what was seen was actually not seen at all. 
The missionary, however, believed that the aliens could be stranded, and they waved because they wanted help. Reverend Gill spent much of the rest of his life talking and writing a guide to his experiences. Number 1. Exoskeleton Assisted Being Even aliens are evolving. While early encounters with extraterrestrials seemed to be exotic but definitely humanoid, by 1973, they seemed to have become alien-type robot beings. When police chief received a call from a woman who said she saw aliens landing in his city, he decided to investigate. Upon his arrival, he found nothing unusual, but as a further precaution, he searched the dirt road near the site. Then, in his headlights, he noticed a figure walking strangely. Chief Greenhaw was worried that the silhouette was injured. As he approached, he realized that the creature was wearing a metallic bodysuit that seemed to emit bright light. The officer asked the stranger if he was okay, but there was no answer. So the cop did what everyone would do. He started taking pictures. However, the camera flash scared the creature, and with incredible speed, it ran away. The photos were reviewed by experts and were considered legitimate, at least in the sense that they were not forged. They even found UFO-like objects on negatives that couldn't have been seen on the prints. Whatever happened that night is something that sounds strange even by modern standards. Number 10. Dominion Dominion is a comparatively new board game that has become famous over the last 10 years. Since it was released on the market, quite a number of expansion packs have been constantly updating the experience. The whole thing just keeps getting bigger and bigger. The game can be played by up to four participants and it's centered around the building of a deck. This is the game that made the deck building concept popular and what made it stand out from the rest was that each card in your possession can interact in a special way with others. Drawing the right card and snatching the victory below the noses of your enemies is never far from happening. In the beginning, all players receive the same assortments of cards. There are various other cards in the center of the board that players can buy as soon as they can afford them. Victory, in the case of this game, is heavily strategy dependent. You need to make the best of the cards in your hands, buy the appropriate ones from the middle, and mix and match them in a way that will make you the best out of a bad situation. You can start the game in various ways, and that's what will keep it interesting and fresh for a long time. Gather some friends, ready your cards, put your thinking cap on, and start your quest towards victory. It may take some time, but you will definitely have fun while trying to wrap your head around the mechanics of the game. Number 9. Clue Clue, or Cluedo in some places, is a classic contender for the number one spot on the market for crime detective games. There is one victim and six suspects. The purpose of the game is to determine who is responsible for the victim's fate, what tools they used, and in which room the crime happened. To do this, you must tour the mansion and visit and explore all its rooms. Each player receives the same number of cards that holds the information concerning the suspect, the tools, and the room that witnessed the crime. Once you get in a room, you must ask the player on your left whether they have a certain character, tool, or a room, and if they do, they are obliged to show you one of the three cards that you asked for. If they have no cards that fit the description, you ask the person on their left, and so on. Through the elimination process, you can cross out any suspect, tool, and room, and ultimately try to guess with who and what and where the crime took place. If you make a mistake, you are out of the game and the game continues with the rest of the players. The game requires that you be observant and use your memory. Since you can ask for as many cards as you want, you will have enough time to collect sufficient evidence before making a guess. This guess can make you win or lose the game. Number 8. The Settlers of Catan The Settlers of Catan takes players on a journey back in time to an era of adventure and exploration. The ships that they command have landed in an uncharted territory, and that territory name will be Catan. Therefore, as players, whether they like it or not, they are settlers of Catan. Although not the most popular game in the world, it is certainly among the ranks of the best ones out there. Of course, this is another game based on trade and economics. The purpose of the game is to take over Catan Island, although there are no skirmishes between or eliminations of other players. Instead, players use the island's natural resources to expand, build their cities, economy, well-being, and to trade, of course. The end of the game comes when one of the players accumulates enough points to be crowned the ruler of Catan. Although the goal is to have the most points at the end of the game, it is impossible to win without trading your opponents and sometimes giving up some valuable resources. This is where strategy comes into play. You need to pay attention to what your enemy's needs are. You need to come up with a strategy that will benefit them in the short run so they can initiate trading, but ultimately bring them victory to your hands. It doesn't sound easy, and believe me when I say it isn't, but only players that master the art of diplomacy can be victorious when the time comes. 
And now for number seven. But first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number seven, Battleship. Battleship is a classic game that requires much strategy and double the amount of luck. This is a game about, you guessed it, battleships. The goal is eradicate all of the enemy's ships and send them to the bottom of the ocean before they do the same to yours. The game is played on a grid of 10 by 10, and everything starts with a random placement of different sized vessels on a playing field. Your goal is to strategically position your battleships to make it difficult for the opponent to find their position. This is where the excitement begins because now is the time for you and your opponent to start making guesses about the location of each other's ships. Nowadays, there are countless versions of the game and even an online version that can be played for all over the world. Fuel your ships, load your cannons, and jump into the hurricane of amazing sea battles with the game that has captured the imaginations of several generations. If you hit an enemy ship, your opponent has to admit it to you and you get another turn. After a ship is destroyed, the motto announced by Hasbro, you sink my battleship, and lots of people still quote the exact words from the commercial that aired years ago. The game continues until the player has submerged all of his opponent's ships. The game is simple, fun to play, and you have many ways of positioning your ships at your disposal. You just have to be creative about it. Number six, Scrabble. Scrabble is a game invented by Alfred Mosher Butts in 1930s, the time of the Great Depression in the United States. Butts didn't know that his game would be life-changing for many and bring smiles to families who at the time were struggling. For years, he analyzed popular games such as chess and checkers and bingo and concluded that the word games do not get the same popularity because there's no scorekeeping. And that's how Scrabble was born. The game is simple, but requires a lot of thought. Players start with seven chips, each with a letter and corresponding dots written on the front. After each turn, players take more chips to fill their hand. Each turn, the player forms a word using the chips in his hand, and points are calculated based on the squares in which the word is placed. However, words must be attached to words that have already been played out. This adds an element of challenge to the game. After the player has played all of his chips and there's no more in the pool or after no more words can be created, the players calculate the sum of their results. Players with remaining chips deduct the number of points in their hand from their total. The person with the most points is the winner. Legend has it that the points for each letter generated by Butts depended on how likely it was that the letters would appear on the cover of the New York Times. Whether this is true or not, we can argue that this is a great origin story. Number five, Stratego. Stratego is a game where two opponents use pieces of a different color, usually red or blue. Each piece has a range of numbers on one side that is played face down, so they are unknown to the opposite player. When a piece is placed on the opponent's square, both pieces are turned, which reveals the numbers, and the piece with a smaller number is taken out of the game. If the number on the pieces is identical, then tough luck. Both of them must go. The ultimate goal is to kick all of your opponent's pieces out of the game in some way or to force them to surrender. True to its title, the game attracts strategy enthusiasts and can entertain you for hours. Since its creation, more than 20 million copies have been purchased all over the world, with great success in the US, Netherlands, Germany, and Belgium. The game has yearly national world championships, online versions, boards, sci-fi characters, and many more. The game is a hit, and surely with so many versions, you can find one that suits your taste. Number four, Risk. Created in 1957 by Albert Lormaurice, the original name was La Conquête du Monde, marketed as the conquest of the world. The game was introduced to the United States, but with a much more appealing name of Risk. The goal of the game has always been the same. Eliminate strategically your competitors and establish control throughout the board. The game exploded on the market in the 1960s and was very popular with high schools and university students around the world. The game's rise to fame was due to its challenging nature that captured the minds of young students. Although luck plays a small role in the outcome of the game, strategy is the key to mastering the board. In addition to Monopoly, Risk is rated as the best partner for practicing and mastering negotiation and strategic interaction skills. If that is not a prestigious recognition, I don't know what is. The game might start a bit slow, but if you give it a chance, you'll see it's absolutely worth it. Who doesn't like role-playing as a courageous knight capturing territory and expanding a kingdom of light or darkness, depending on your personal preference? Soon enough, you'll be hooked on the interesting gameplay. Be warned though, as interesting as the game might be, it is a proven time sponge. Number three, Monopoly. Monopoly is surely one of the most popular board games worldwide. I'm certain that almost all of you have played it once, or if not, there's no way on earth you haven't heard about it. 
Since its creation in 1935, more than 1 billion people have purchased and played more than 250 million versions of the game in question. As one of the most popular board games known to man, it officially found its place in the National Gaming Hall of Fame in 1998. For people hearing about the game for the first time, basically, Monopoly is a board game based on real estate that can accommodate up to eight players. The main objective of the game is to be financially sound and at the same time to force your opponents out of business and relieve them of their possessions. Each player moves across the board, buying properties and building houses, and if an opponent player lands there, they have to pay a hefty rent. As one player gets bigger and bigger with his properties, the others will slowly decrease until there is only one player with all the money. While chance can help you win or lose faster, it's essentially a strategy game. The original game board had locations from real-life London, but nowadays there are hundreds of types of games itself, and if you search long enough, you just might be able to find one with your streets on it. Search the web, you never know what you can find. Number 2. Ticket to Ride I love this game. Ride has won dozens of awards and sold more than 6 million copies since its creation. It's a popular modern board game that takes players on a train journey across the country, all while giving them the ability to collect cards with different types of trains that allow them to become the owners of rail tracks that connect different locations. The game is easy to learn but requires strategy and is fun to master. The longer the train routes that a player is able to accumulate, the larger score they will be able to reach. A mechanic that is called destination tickets exists and it offers players an opportunity to make some additional points. In simpler terms, every turn you take cards, get a hold of a route, or obtain a destination ticket. It's an amazing modern game that can make time spent with your family even more fun and competitive. You won't be disappointed because a game like this can take sudden and unexpected turns and there's no way to predict who in the end will bear the title of the winner. Number 1. Chess Chess is considered one of the oldest and most played board games in all of history. It is played by two people on a board with contrasting colors, usually black and white, and the respective pieces. The pieces consist of a king and a queen, two bishops, knights, usually represented as horses, and rooks, from the Persian word, the castle tower, and eight pawns. Each piece moves in a different direction around the board, and the purpose of the game is to corner the opponent's king. The game first appeared in India around the 6th century AD and quickly spread to Asia and Europe. It soon became known as the true game, due to its popularity among the royal family, and it still played exactly the way it was at its time. It was during the 20th century that the game experienced massive growth that led to national competitions and sponsorships of players. With the recent massive growth of technology, a series of applications has been created that will allow people to play online and international competitions and games. I'm sure when the game was invented, whoever did it never dreamed it would become the phenomenon it is today. Number 10. The Vasa Disappointment The story of what happened to the ship has its rightful place in history. It was one of the greatest achievements of the Swedish fleet. Among the most spectacular warships ever built, while at the same time being one of their biggest disappointments. The ship survived the first gust of wind she met while sailing in the Stockholm port, but the second one ended her voyage. Vasa's tragedy did not happen near an enemy. In fact, it was in the front of the horrified audience gathered to witness the most ambitious warship in her navy in Europe so far. Scientists concluded that the engineering problems betrayed the ship. This public relations disaster for the Swedish navy became a blessing for archaeologists later down the line. Vasa was built by the order of the king and it was expected to become the first flagship of the 17th century Swedish fleet. But it did not even manage to leave Stockholm Bay and sink immediately after leaving the shipyard. Due to a wrong decision, the ship was really unstable. Shortly after touching the water, she rolled over and quickly went to the bottom in front of the eyes of thousands of city dwellers. Well, they tried and failed, but they did unintentionally build the first submarine. Number 9. The Destroyed Priceless Painting Some painters live without being appreciated or paid for their work. So it seems fair that after her work of art had attracted worldwide attention, that Cecilia Jimenez was entitled to make a little money, even if she did make someone look like a very hairy monkey. It's okay to be confident, but if your skills miss the target by a long shot, maybe you better improve them before claiming you can restore a priceless artifact. When the 80-year-old parishioner spotted Behold the Man at the Church of the Sanctuary of Mercy in Borgia, she knew exactly how to fix it. Or at least she was eager to try, but her reach exceeded her grasp. The end result looks a little different from the original, which made the internet sufferers recopy the picture. While the original artifact is sadly ruined, there is a good argument to be made that the mistake did indeed have a positive effect. 
So many tourists came to see the masterpiece that the church started charging people to see it, generating 50,000 euros for charities. Local businesses have welcomed the increase in tourism and the church has seen a significant increase in donations. What was the saying about the Lord working in mysterious ways? Number eight, Bitcoins in the trash. Bitcoins emerged in 2009 and they were easy enough to earn. The Englishman James Howell had collected 7,500 in digital currency, but then they costed almost nothing. In 2013, the price of his Bitcoins rose to 7.5 million. When the man realized he was gonna be rich, he looked for his drive and to his horror, he found that he had thrown it away and the drive had contained Bitcoins and it was currently residing in an unknown location in the local landfill. Can you imagine? Since then, more than six years of garbage has been thrown over the hard drive, which means that any recovery operation would be expensive and time-consuming. Although he made several requests to the local council, Hal still has no permission to search for the lost treasure. The only thing that he needs to do is persuade the local authorities and environmental agencies to allow him to begin his search, which they haven't so far. The man is hopeful that due to the increasing price, at one point he will be allowed to go and dig for his hard drive because the item containing the bitcoins will become extremely valuable. Some may say too valuable for staying in the trash dump. Will he ever get permission to look for his bitcoins? No one knows, but at least he can look at the landfill like a pension fund. Its value is growing while you just have to live long enough to be able to finally get it. Talk about bad luck. And now for number seven. But first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number seven, Millennium Bridge. The Millennium Bridge, which connects the two banks of the River Thames in London, opened in 2000 and closed almost immediately. It turned out that a large crowd of people turned into a dramatic swing. The original cost of the bridge, 18.2 million euros, it is now safe to use, but at the time of the opening, it was like a scary roller coaster ride. Usually, when you're looking for thrills, the only time you go to a bridge is when you've decided to bungee jump from it. The bridge in question was different because no one told the public that it would rock their world. Pun intended. People panicked due to the bridge moving side to side like crazy, but that was not something that 91 stabilizing dampers can't cope with. The question is why in the world were they not present in the first place? Hey guys, wanna build a bridge and not test it and see what happens? Number six, oil rig trouble. When a Texaco oil rig drilled too much in the ground in Louisiana, it led to the collapse of the salt pillars that supported Lake Penyar. Drainage was formed and the lake went from only six feet deep to a monstrous 200 feet deep. An hour and a half later, the workers saw on site that their 150 feet high derrick faded into the lake that had an average depth of less than three feet. It appeared that the drill accidentally penetrated the main well of the Diamond Crystal salt mine whose tunnels crossed the rocks below the lake. The lake water now entered the mine through a 14-inch hole that quickly expanded into the salt dome and it had 10 times the force of a fire hydrant pressure. 50 miners ran through the rising waters using passing cars and an amazingly slow elevator to get out of the mine eight people at a time. Texaco paid 44.8 million for the incredibly expensive and worrying mistake. Number five, $225 million lost due to sleep deprivation. Japanese company Mizuho Securities wanted to sell a share for about $5,000 on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. However, it seems that the stockbroker did not have a good night's sleep and made a small mistake while entering the data. He put 610,000 shares up for sale, just one yen each. Despite the company's protest, the stock exchange processed the order, which resulted in the loss of 225 million. The whole story is just unbelievable, and it's a testament to how important sleep is. I don't even want to begin to imagine what happened to the stockbroker when he realized his mistake. How do you come back home with the news like that? Hi honey, how was your day? Well, things went south in the office. I was on the computer and well, I lost 225 million for the folks that I work for. No biggie, they told me I could pay them back working overtime. Have you heard of the term FUBAR? Do me a favor and Google it real quick. Number four, $327.6 million spaceship. The Mars Climate Orbiter was developed by NASA to study weather on Mars. Due to an amazing mistake, contact with the space vessel was lost while it was in the atmosphere. To transfer coordinates, NASA teams used different measurement systems. As a result, the orbiter entered the atmosphere of Mars too low and collapsed. The main problem consisted of measurements in the imperial system mixing with such from the metric system. It went on for almost 10 months and was not detected at all. Such a simple mistake 
essentially a flaw in translation, went back to the contractor, Lockheed Martin Astronautics in Colorado, using pounds, where the NASA team used the internationally recognized metric system. That proved to be a horrible misunderstanding that sent the MCO on a crash course towards the surface of the red planet. Wow, an error like that crashed $327.6 million of equipment. I guess if you plan on working for NASA, you should probably pay attention in math. Number three, an overly heavy submarine. The Spanish government invested 1.75 billion pounds in a new Isaac Peril submarine. Later down the road, officials realized the ship was weighing 70 tons more than expected because an engineer put the decimal point in the wrong place. A former Spanish official identified the mistake as fatal, which raised concerns the submarine would not reappear if sent to sea. The construction process has shown that it is too heavy and risks not being able to return to the surface after immersion. It turned out that in the beginning, someone made the mistake in calculations. The correction of this accidental mistake required that the length of the hull was extended to compensate for the enormous amount of extra weight. Isaac Peril, the first in the new class of diesel electric submarines, was almost finished when the problem was noticed. Better late than never, right? At least nothing bad happened, except the incredibly costly reconstruction. Number two, wide wagons and narrow platforms. In 2014, the railway company, SNCF, assessed the modernization of a transport network and ordered 2,000 new trains for 15 billion euros. Unfortunately, the measurements that were supplied were from stations that were built at least 30 years ago and many platforms have been older and slightly narrower. They had to be urgently expanded, a task that amounted to an additional 50 million euros. The costly mistake prompted an emergency operation to change 1,300 platforms across the regional network. The SNCF acknowledged that one in six regional train stations was problematic. In the worst case, it was found that two trains could not cross adjacent lines. If we look at this from the bright side, who wouldn't want rapid modernization of the railways in their country? Probably someone who is paying 50 million extra. Number one, the sale of Alaska. In the late 19th century, Alexander II of Russia considered Alaska was only an ice-covered land. In March of 1867, Russia took the decision to sell the ginormous territory to the U.S. for only 7.2 million. Because the rubble's ration to the dollar was almost equal at the time, Russia won little from this agreement, but lost billions of dollars in natural resources. Alaska is a huge piece of land that is filled with natural resources. It might have felt like a good idea at the time, but from today's point of view, not so much. Just imagine how much oil Alaska has beneath its surface, and you will find out that 7.2 million was a funny amount, considering what you're getting. I guess it's in the past, but I bet someone surely is kicking themselves for that. Thanks for watching. What's the most expensive mistake you've ever made? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.